Welcome to the Agility in Real Life podcast, Take 5 in Real Life. Now your hosts, my Studeman and Jeff Lee. Welcome back to the Take 5 IRL podcast, Take 5 in Real Life. I'm one of the partners at Agility IRL, Jeff Lee. And I'm the other partner, Mike Studeman. Uh, welcome to our podcast. Today, Jeff, I wanted to put a question that or a scenario to you that frequently comes up in working with teams. The scenario is this, and I just want your reaction to it. Uh, we're carrying over work sprint after sprint after sprint. Is that bad? Is that bad? Well, it doesn't sound great. Um, first, I want to start with carryover. I imagine most people listening to this are familiar with this term. Uh, generally, talking about work that didn't get done one sprint that they continue working on in the next. Uh, if you look in the Scrum Guide, you do not find the word carryover. This is not a thing in Scrum. There is no default that if work doesn't get done in one sprint, it automatically continues in the next sprint. So the first thing I'll say is, is you know, again, I, I won't say there's no such thing as carryover. We have a definition for it and, and people know what it means, but you don't have to keep working on stuff. And from a product owner's perspective, if you know what you worked on in the last sprint isn't going to be the most important thing in the next sprint, maybe you have a different sprint goal and you want to align the work to that sprint goal. And the stuff that didn't get done last sprint isn't aligned to that. Well, it's okay to say that's going back on the backlog. We're not going to do that next sprint. It's not the important thing for us. And so every sprint is a new beginning. Every sprint backlog starts sprint planning with nothing in it. Um, so you know, again, I just want to kind of put that out that you don't necessarily have to carry over. But uh, if you're finding you're not completing your work in sprints, if you're finding you're not meeting your sprint goals, that sounds like a problem. What do you do about that, Mike? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, first of all, it is a problem. It's a signal that the system, and when I say the system here, I don't mean the product, the system that is the team is taking on too much work. And, and this is where I think the retrospective becomes very, very important or, or continues to show its importance in that a good scrum team, if it is uh, taking on carryover work, uh, every sprint should during the retrospective stop and say, okay, why are we doing this? Why are we continuing to take on more work than we can get done? Now, having been part of these conversations, both as a member of a scrum team and as a coach, uh, I think you might get into some interesting organizational impediments here. Um, and this is where I, I think, Jeff, in my experience, and I'm interested in your thoughts as well, uh, this is a, a moment of self-learning or self-reflection for a lot of teams, because when you ask the question of why are you taking on so much work, you hear about the proverbial they. They I told us we crazy. have to take on so much, so much work. And when you probe, at least when I probe around who's the they, the... <laughs> What's the old saying? I've looked in the mirror. I've seen the enemy and it is us. <laughs> it's not someone outside the team that's doing it. We're doing it to ourselves. I don't, uh, your thoughts on that, uh, that I idea. Yeah, no, I think that's very often true. And I find that not only with the amount of work in a sprint, but like the ability to try out new things. No, we can't. They won't let us. They don't want us to. Well, yes. Like you were saying, who are they? And once you get a name on it, then you can find out what that person really thinks. Um, one great way of getting rid of an impediment is just asking the person who you think is, you know, giving that impediment, they might not care. They might be supporting doing less work and getting more done. Um, so Mike, when you have these or see these conversations and retrospectives, whose fault is it that they're <laughs> too much work? Yeah. I mean, I alluded to my, my answer to this question earlier, but, but oftentimes it, it's, it's one of two. The vast majority of times, it's the developers and, and product owner, the scrum team's own fault. They've put pressure on themselves to be getting all of this done. Now, I will acknowledge that sometimes that pressure is brought by our second uh, potential culprit here of, of management saying, well, we need something by this date, which that's, uh, that's an issue for the, the product owner to manage in their uh, set of stakeholder management responsibilities. And talking about things like sustainable pace, a good scrum master, of course, can help them with that conversation. But in the vast majority of circumstances, I've seen the enemy and it is us. It is the scrum team that's forcing themselves to try to get all this work done. 
Yeah, I, I find the best way to break that kind of cycle is to run an experiment of doing less, right? And, and working to get to done in a sprint and then working to get to done in the next sprint by not taking on too much, right? And, and get a good, good series of successful sprints before you even think about, can we do more? Yeah, there's actually a name for what you just described. And this, once again, isn't an official scrum technique, uh, but it's a technique I've seen used on teams in the past. It's called yesterday's weather. Yesterday's weather states that the team can commit to getting no more done in their current sprint than they got to done in their prior sprint. What it does is it forces them, as you just said, Jeff, to find what a sustainable pace is and kind of get some momentum. And, and once you've hit your your, uh, you know, met your goal fully for a few sprints, then you can kind of step back and say, okay, are we willing to stretch versus just trying to push um, 12 pounds of potatoes into a 10 pound bag every sprint? Yeah. Yeah. And the whole point of scrum is to get to a done working increment every sprint. It's not to make progress every sprint. It's to get something done every sprint. If you're not doing that, you're not doing it right. Couldn't agree more. Uh, and in fact, I I would argue that the focus of getting to done in every sprint is arguably one of the biggest mindset shifts that organizations have to embrace as they look to adopt the Scrum or any other agile way of working. All right. Well, Mike, we did our opening. Uh, we walked through the, the contents of this podcast. We are now moving to the wrap up and uh, you're soon going to hear the, the closing music and Angelina's voiceover. Uh, any other parting thoughts you have as we get to done on this podcast? No, I just, uh, I'll wrap up my comments by saying, I think I'll stop carrying on about carryover. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone. The product vision for Take 5 in Real Life is to provide members of the Agile community with an idea that they can incorporate into their daily lives to make them more effective. We thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.